So just one other thing I thought I would do today, just to see if I can get this whole vlog ball rolling, was I thought maybe on Sundays I would do a post to kind of update people about what I'm doing, even though I'm sure nobody actually cares. But, uh... And I'm, I'm not talking about, like, work, but like, what am I enjoying? You know, what kind of... what, what games am I playing? So, if, if you're not into, uh, hearing people talk about what kind of pop culture they're currently devouring, you should go the other way. But first, I'm gonna start with, um... Kind of a topic about the blog... you know, it was... It, I wrote... I wrote this as a blog post. It's much more long-winded than I'm going to do here. And, um... But I didn't get to edit it because of the... the printer dying. So... I was seeing a lot of people dissing Donkey Kong 64, you know, across the internet, talking about how there's just way too much stuff to collect, or, you know, it takes too long. One person mentioned that, um, the levels are set up like playgrounds, and honestly, that can't be a bad thing, because what adult doesn't fantasize or remember fondly the days of running around a McDonald's playland, or, you know, a, a, a park? Playgrounds are awesome. And, um, but anyway, so I went back, because of these, uh, opinions, I went back and I replayed Donkey Kong 64 in its beautiful yellow cartridge, and, um, I loved it. You know, I, ha I haven't played it in, since, since I was maybe 12, so it's, it's 11 years, maybe a little younger than that, and, um, so I'd gotten to forget most of the, uh, the puzzles and, and the level design, and that was cool, because I got to re-experience it, so I got to, uh, replay the game, hopefully without, you know, nostalgia blinders. And I loved it. I loved every second of it. It was great. Um, the only problem with it was it ended, and I didn't, I didn't want that to end. I didn't, sorry, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't want it to end. I wanted to keep playing. It's a great game. I wanted more. I wanted a sequel. It makes me hate that Rare got sold by Nintendo all over again. Um, so anyway, I thought, well, what other, what other great, and, um, I hate the collect-a-thon word, so I'm gonna go with scavenger hunt. What other great scavenger hunt games are out there? Uh, you know, in, in the past year, I've finally gotten around to discovering Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, and that's an awesome thing, but, uh, it's kind of a different flavor from from what uh, Nintendo and Rare were producing, so I thought, well, I'll go back and I'll play, uh, Banjo-Tooie. But, um, my cartridge is having a little bit of a lockup issue, so I'm gonna have to clean that. And I thought in the meantime I would revisit Banjo-Kazooie. Yeah, the old classic. You see I got tipped up there, because, you know, he, he's in both this game and the Kong. I hate my childhood. But, um, so I was playing Banjo-Kazooie, and I knew it wasn't quite the same as Donkey Kong 64, which is, you know, it's cluttered with beautifully colored collectibles, you know, bananas, coins, fairies, the, the, the freaking um, blueprints. They're just everywhere. Banjo-Kazooie is more like Super Mario 64, where it's much more sparse and, and much more, you know, mission-oriented. Explore this, this smaller area. But I thought that was okay. I thought... I thought I could handle that. Um, no, I know I can handle it. I've beaten the game like seven times, and actually that's the problem I wanted to talk about right now is, you know, I'm, s I'm still playing through it, and I'm up to, um, where am I? I just opened Rusty Bucket Bay. You know, so I've, I've cleared the desert, I've, I've cleared the peaks, and the game is only just now starting to get fun for me, even though... You know, I, I very fondly remember Mumbo's Mountain and uh, Treasure Trove Cove. That's not Diddy Kong Racing, is it? I'm gonna go with Treasure Trove Cove. But, um, so I very, I very fondly remember those levels. But the problem is, since I've played this game, you know, six or seven times, probably more, I was almost playing through those earlier levels just on muscle memory. You know, it was all autopilot. It's just... Do this, do that, do this. It's all in my brain. You know, I'm retracing the same steps I had as a, as a child. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering if... Maybe that's part of the issue when, when, when people, uh... You know, they have the nostalgia, right? They remember a game being awesome, 
and they complain that when they go back and they play it, it's boring. And I'm wondering if, if maybe it's because it's all in muscle memory. They're not, they don't have to think as hard because they remember the game so well. Just a thought. I mean, I'm going to finish it. It's starting to get fun. I mean, the characters are always fun. The comedy is always fun. Really, really makes me hate the nuts and bolts more than I already did. But uh, Microsoft seems to be pulling it together. Maybe we'll see a good Banjo-Kazooie game soon. So that's it for games. So um, I'm also reading... I'm a big superhero guy. So I'm reading this book by... Uh, Okay, it's called Super Folks, and it's by, I'm going to totally mess up this name, I'm going to call him Robert Meyer, but it's probably Mayer. Mayer? Mayer? Mayer. I'm going to go with Mayer, actually. Robert Mayer. And, um, you know, I read about 50 pages a day, unless it's one of my, one of my weekends when I, I don't uh, work on my novel. Then I might read a little more or less, you know, just at my leisure. Although today, I'm playing with videos. So, um... The first 50 pages didn't quite grip me. I trucked it through only because it supposedly inspired Alan Moore, and Stan Lee recommended it. Uh, I hope I aimed that right. But Stan Lee recommends it right there on the cover. And, yeah, cool superhero art. So, um... It's kind of Watchmen-y, but, but like, a, like a, almost a funny... Looney Tunes type of Watchmen. You know, Watchmen is super grit, super, uh, super Dark Knight trilogy. Super noir, I'll say. Watchmen is pretty noir. This is a little, uh, intentionally campy. It's, it's like twisted humor where it's making social commentary and it's making light of it through, you know, kind of these caricatures. And, uh, that didn't really grip me at first. It was just too, uh, I don't know what's the word. I don't want to use corny, but maybe corny is right. I'm going to go with a little corny, and it was a little hard to follow. I think that might partially be just because of the way I process language. But uh, it was a, a little difficult for me to follow, so it almost lost me. Although, I, uh, part of what kept me going was that it's interesting because it takes place in this world that alludes to fictional characters having existed. You know, it mentions in the beginning that Snoopy was real and was shot down by the Red Baron, you know, it talks about other comic book heroes as though they exist in this world, even though the main character is supposed to be uh, a deconstruction of Superman in a way, and um, which, which is cool. It's interesting seeing the, uh, the parallel characters here, you know, to, with the, the copyright, what's it called, the, the trademark shaved off so that it's acceptable to publish it, although I did notice most of the characters are either independent characters or DC, so I'm wondering if Warner had some hand in its, in its creation or its republishing or whatever. But, um, I'm now a hundred pages in, and it's catching up in terms of, of keeping me hooked just based on the, on the narrative that's coming through. So that's pretty cool. I'm looking excited. I'm, I'm pretty excited to, uh, continue reading it. I was supposed to do that earlier. Reading time is early. But, whatever. Trying new things today. And the last two things I want to talk about. See, I have four, what I consider the four big medias, which are video games, comic books, uh, film, and literature. And, I mean, music is in there too, but I don't uh, binge music. Well, I do binge music, but I don't dissect it the way I do with, with uh, narrative structures. I mean, I dissect narrative music. It's not something I binge, though. Anyway, um, so the other thing I'm doing, and I don't have a prop for it right, right with me, mainly because I don't want to take my comics downstairs, where who knows what's going to happen to them, and cats are already leering at me. But, um, so I'm reading Spider-Girl. Uh, the first, the first Spider-Girl series, uh, Mayday Parker from the the M2 universe, Marvel 2, it's the alternate future or whatever. And this is after I had... Last month I went through the, the new Spider-Girl comics. With, um, you know, the, the Hispanic girl? I don't remember her civilian alias. She's Spider-Girl. You know, picks... Her dad dies. She thinks Red Hulk did it. That kind of thing. That was good. Um, 
so I, I was reading, you know, Mayday Parker Spider-Girl now, and I'm 20 issues in, and I'm, I'm realizing, um, these, uh, 90s and early 2000s comics are taking me a lot longer to read than modern-day comic books do. A modern comic book I can pound out in, in 10, 10 or 12 minutes, you know? I don't, I don't usually spend... 15 or longer reading a comic, but these these older ones are filled with a much thicker narrative structure, and they kind of uh, just eat up time, you know, I'm spending 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes 30 if it's really, really dense uh, per book, and I feel like it's to the detriment of the story. Yeah, I feel like the story is dragging a little bit. Um, the characters aren't as, uh, memorable as the ones in, you know, the new Spider-Girl stories, the Hispanic one. Much more memorable characters, I mean, even though I can't remember their names, I can remember, you know, the, the characters and the, the archetypes and the roles they played, and, you know, what their motivations were. With, with, uh, this Spider-Girl, I'm having trouble following it in that way, you know, I come back to it and I have to, you know, to take a moment and be like, okay, who's this, who's this, what's happened, um... It's getting a little better when, now that we're focusing more on, you know, the more super characters. I think it's mainly just this uh, Asian jerk friend guy that Mayday has at school and just having trouble f figuring out where he fits into everything. He just, he seems to exist only to get his face beaten by the stand-in for uh, Flash Thompson. And, uh, you know, just to, just to cause issues for Mayday at school, it's just the same issue over and over, like, it's not... I'm, I'm 20 issues in, and this Asian kid at school, with Mayday, has repeated the same story arc five times. You know, it, it's okay to have real-life drama, that's what made the original Spider-Man so good, but it's the same drama in 20 issues, again and again. Even the Mary Jane series brought up new problems or new angles. I'm not sure if I'm gonna finish it. I mean, it's, it's picking up. I'm liking the way Spider-Girl, the identity Spider-Girl, you know, the, the personality Mayday puts on when she puts on the costume, I'm liking where that's developing. And I'm liking the relationship between her and her uh, father, Peter Parker, and uh, these other characters. You know, Dark Devil's cool. I like to see him. The Buzz shows, showed up recently, and I'm not sure what's what's up with him. Although, and I'm, I don't know if this is a spoiler yet, because I'm only 20 issues in, but the Buzz's costume is suspiciously like Yellow Jackets, so I'm kind of feeling like his secret mentor guy is Pym, possibly Lang, but, you know, there's already Stinger and that lineage. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing with comics. And, uh, what was the last one? Books, comic books, video games, TV! Yes, no prop for that either. But I'm currently watching Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which is a cartoon interpretation of, of not the movie, although the movies have definitely influenced the direction that this show took. You know, Tony Stark is way more Robert Downey Jr. than, you know, any other animated Tony Stark has been. And, um, I'm liking it. I like it a lot more than, than what's on Disney XD right now, which is mostly just crap. It's not my favorite superhero cartoon, and it's not even my favorite Marvel cartoon, but I would say as far as the Marvel cartoons go, it's it's tied for number two with X-Men Evolution. Um, so far, nothing has matched Spectacular Spider-Man. That was just... that's that's up in the top five superhero cartoons, like, ever. Now, my problem with these shows is, is that, um, A, well, A, they're over, but B, they're in, they, they don't influence the comic books all that much, which is a shame, because I feel like the cartoons do a better job of bringing the universes together and of showing off the characters and of, of not letting itself be tied down by some of the bad mistakes the comic books have made. And, um... You know, like, they take a character that that doesn't have much going for them. Like, take the Wasp. Okay, she shrinks and she shoots hand 
stingers, hand laser things. Um, which is not very exciting. But, um, in this Avengers cartoon, they've made her a very dynamic character, almost the focus of the show, I, I kind of want to say, where her relationships probably develop more than any other characters. You know, I mean, they have Black Panther there, but he's just kind of in the background almost. Uh, you know, I don't... <laughs> And uh, I kind of feel that way about, you know, X-Men Evolution 2, which I mentioned as being some of my favorite interpretations of these characters, you know. The Nightcrawler in X-Men Evolution is way more appealing to me than the Nightcrawler in the comic books. Same with Kitty Pride. Uh, but on the other hand, I don't particularly like what they've done with Cyclops in that show. And, you know, on the same hand with Avengers, I don't particularly like... Oh no, I like most of the Avengers cartoon. Anyway, hopefully I'll be finishing that tonight. And, uh... Rambled way more than I meant to, sorry. So, uh... Well, what are you guys doing? You know, you've heard what I'm doing, and so, and obviously you've heard what I've thought about them, and, and whether I've enjoyed them or not. And I'm always looking for other things to enjoy. So, you know, if, you, if you've got a scavenger hunt game that's more along the lines of Donkey Kong 64, you know, that I haven't heard of, or if you've got a superhero book, it doesn't necessarily have to be as deconstructive as Super Folks is. I don't necessarily like that, that uh, narrative approach. But if you've got, you know, a good superhero prose novel that I probably haven't heard of, or a comic book series, or even... You know, a cartoon. Am I missing a really awesome Marvel cartoon in there? I've seen most of them, but am I missing a cool one? Um, just let me know in the comments. Cool. A park. Playgrounds are awesome. And, um, but anyway, so I went back, because of these, uh, opinions, I went back and I replayed Donkey Kong 64 in its beautiful yellow cartridge. And, um... I loved it. You know, I, ha I haven't played it in since since I was maybe 12, so it's, it's 11 years, maybe a little younger than that. And um, so I'd gotten to forget most of the, uh, the puzzles and, and the level design, and that was cool, because I got to re-experience it. So I got to uh, replay the game, hopefully without kind of a topic about the blog, you know, it was, it, I wrote, I wrote this as a blog post. It's much more long-winded than I'm going to do here, and, um, but I didn't get to edit it because of the, the printer dying. So, I was seeing a lot of people dissing Donkey Kong 64, you know, across the internet, talking about how there's just way too much stuff to collect, or, you know, it takes too long. One person mentioned that um, the levels are set up like playgrounds, and honestly, that can't be a bad thing, because what adult doesn't fantasize or, or remember fondly the days of running around in McDonald's Playland? Or, you know, a, 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 you know, nostalgia blinders. And I loved it. I loved every second of it. It was great. Um, the only problem with it was it ended. And I didn't, I didn't want that to end. I didn't... Sorry. I didn't, I didn't, uh... I didn't want it to end. I wanted to keep playing. It's a great game. I wanted more. I wanted a sequel. It makes me hate that Rare got sold by Nintendo all over again. Um, so anyway, I thought, well, what other... What other great, and um, I hate the collect-a-thon word, so I'm going to go with scavenger hunt. What other great scavenger hunt games are out there? So just one other thing I thought I would do today, just to see if I can get this whole vlog ball rolling, was I thought maybe on Sundays I would do a post to kind of update people about what I'm doing, even though I'm sure nobody actually cares. But, uh, and I'm, I'm not talking about, like, work, but like, what am I enjoying? You know, what kind of, what, what games am I playing? So, if, if you're not into, uh, hearing people talk about what kind of pop culture they're currently devouring, you should go the other way. But first, I'm gonna start with, um, uh, you know, in, in the past year, I've finally gotten around to discovering Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, and that's an awesome thing. But, uh, it's kind of a different flavor from from what uh, Nintendo and Rare were producing. So I thought, well, I'll go back and I'll play uh, Banjo-Tooie. 
but um, my cartridge is having a little bit of a lockup issue, so I'm gonna have to clean that. And I thought in the meantime I would revisit Banjo Kazooie. Yeah, the old classic. You see, I got tipped up there because you know he he's in both this game and Diddy Kong. I hate my childhood, but um.